Let's make static meshes react to the environment using Niagara. You probably already know about vertex animation textures, and you've probably seen dynamics before, like for example the character dynamics, or just generally physics in Unreal. But what if we just want something that gives some more life to our scene in a way that we can have complete control over? Render targets in the content examples don't really show an awful lot of what the possibilities are. But we can use this to, instead of pre-generating a vertex animation texture, just generate the texture on the fly from the particles that we have in our system. In these examples I've only tried to imitate some real-world phenomena, but you can of course use this system for anything that you like. Let's say we want to rig a broken cable like this. What we probably want to do is put in some joints here in the middle of it. So this means that if we have a vertex on the object, then it will ever only be influenced by either this or that joint. If we have a vertex down here, likewise, either this or that. So we can say that there's always only two influences. This means that if we made a texture that just has a pixel for every joint, one, two, three, four, and we put the position of each of these inside each of those pixels, and we then unwrap the model. So for a vertex here, it would end up here right on the border, which would mean it would be 0 0.5 of that one and 0 0.5 of that one. In the same fashion, you could also expand it so you had a 2D texture, I don't know, carpet or something like this. And you could then in Niagara start spawning a point for every sort of simulation vertex you want on your cloth, your flag or whatever it is. So we have a vertex up here, or actually let's draw another one down here. And there's one thing you need to notice here is if you just took the interpolated value, this point here, and that's a bit problematic because that's not this point here. That's, that's, that's in here, in between these two you want this point a bit out here so it's not enough to just interpolate the values what you really need to do is you need to construct a space where you say well set this way up towards this other point x is this way and then y that's coming well in this case kind of out of the picture like that let's just redraw the chain where it's in motion so it makes a little more sense in situ and our point here is somewhere like here and so you can actually also see this like it's like rotated, it's not horizontally offset out. So we need to find all these angles. So the first one we find is the set direction. So if we call this one P0 and we call this one P1, so that'll give a vector that goes this way. Then for the next direction, first time around, we are simply just going to say it's along X. So it gets a bit like this. Then for the third one, we take the cross product, just give it that vector that's sort of perpendicular to these two, the plane that these two create. So it'll go something like, this way. So once this one is normalized, it will basically be perpendicular to the set. It will be representing our y and will be the second of the three axes that we need in order to construct a space. And then for the x-axis, it's going to be perpendicular out and have a length of one orthonormal to the two other ones. So we now have the vectors along with the change of position from point here to over there. So we have P, set, Y, and we have X. So we have these four vectors that will allow us to create a four by four transformation matrix that will let us transform our point from in here to now out here. If we open up the Niagara system here, we set up a few data interfaces to begin with, the render target, the size of the mesh that we use. We take a particle count, which we take directly out of the render target, a particle attribute reader, and a spacing that we calculate based on how many points we have. We don't do an awful lot of interesting things in the image update or particle spawn. And then in the particle update, we have a relay integration based on the velocity stored. We just take where was the point last frame, where is it this frame, well, take the difference between the two and apply it again for the next frame. It also has a bit of arbitrary dampening going on and some collision testing. We then have a push to distance solver that makes sure that if the distance that is showing here is the distance that is maintained for every frame. So that's how you get the rope-like behavior. So in the push to distance, what we're doing is calculating some extra forces. We're then taking the point before so we can push the points apart. There's a bit of dampening and there's some collision detection. And then we make sure that point zero always stays on the pivot so that we can move the rope around. 
Then lastly, we just write the positions to the render target. It's quite literally just using the attribute reader and the execution index to get the position to set the render target value. So here inside the material, we just use the position texture, sample it multiple locations so we can construct our X, Y, Z axes. We then use that to transform the position, but we also use it to transform the normal and the tangent so normal maps still fit. So that's the quick rundown. If you want to try and have a closer look at the project, the download is in the description below.